Now to Israel and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has narrowly avoided the collapse of his coalition government over his handling of last week's conflict with Gaza. A key minister who threatened to quit decided instead to give the prime minister more time. But the resignation of his defense chief last week has left him clinging to a one-seat majority. Charlie Daggett reports. This is how it went down in Gaza last week when they learned the Israeli defense minister had stepped down. Supporters of the militant group Hamas burned posters of Avigdor Lieberman, reading Gaza brought Lieberman down. After a botched Israeli commando raid in Gaza triggered the worst fighting between the two sides since 2014, until Hamas called a truce. Lieberman thought Israel should have continued pounding targets in the Strip and resigned in protest. Hamas may have been the ones to declare a ceasefire, but for supporters here in Gaza, this is nothing less than a celebration of victory. The first full day of the ceasefire gave residents a chance to return to the streets and survey the damage. The flattened Hamas-run TV station has been pummeled each time both sides have gone to war. Other targets were less obvious, like the apartment building where pharmacist Fayez Yazier lived with his wife and five young children. Yeah, my heart is broken when I look at that. You Your know, heart's broken? Yeah. He said it was 4.30 in the morning when Israeli security forces rang his phone. They called me, they told me you have just five minutes to leave the building. So you just grabbed what you could? We ran away very, very quickly. Still wearing the pajamas he wore to bed, 12-year-old Yazan told me he lost his school bag, clothes, and all his toys. I am sad, very, very sad. Those things can be replaced. Any feeling of safety may be lost for longer. The recent conflict with Hamas exposed deep divisions within Israel. And with many inside the Israeli government insisting its military should have hit harder, people on both sides worry about the next inevitable flare-up in violence. Charlie Daggett joins us now from London. So, Charlie, can you describe the extent of the damage that you saw in Gaza? It looked pretty bad. Um, what was it like when you actually talked to the people there? Well, Amory, Gaza is a mess. Uh, it was broken before this happened. Uh, the Israelis hit 160 targets uh, over the course of just over 24 hours, answering uh, 460 uh, Hamas rockets that were fired in. So it was the intensity of these attacks that shocked everybody. Nothing on the scale that we saw back in 2014, where more than 2,000 people died. And I think the, the impression that I got, kind of from both sides, because we reported from the Israeli side the day before we got into Gaza, and they just weren't expecting that pace. It was nothing like that in 2014, over that short period of time. And you got a sense that neither side wanted to see a return to that kind of violence which is why Hamas, anyway, declared a ceasefire, a truce, anyway, uh, within 24 hours, which stopped that violence. But as you can see, they hit the, the Hamas-run TV station that leveled that block there. That was the most of the damage. 160 targets throughout Gaza. You know, I also have to explain to people who have never been there, don't understand, it's a really small place. There are 1.9 million people in this really congested area. So although these are surgical strikes from the Israeli Defense Forces, hitting 160 of them is going to have an impact on the city. Uh, Charlie, let's talk about what's going on in the Knesset. As we said, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, has sort of narrowly avoided the collapse of this coalition government. What's next? Well, um, when the defense minister, Avigdor Lieberman, dropped out, he had that one-seat majority. That put him in a position where people were thinking, well, they may call a snap election, because if he had lost that one seat and there was a threat that that was going to happen uh, yesterday, then he would have lost his coalition majority. It still may happen that they are going to call for early elections. The way it stands, they have to have these done by November of next year. It may happen in the spring. The reason this is a problem or it's a concern in that area is that because there are so many people within uh, the government, the Israeli government, who thought that Benjamin Netanyahu should have gone further in punishing Hamas. Hamas had started this. This was done in retaliation. They felt that people with inside the Israeli military and the government should have gone for further, including the defense minister. So if there is a shift, a political shift to the right, that may bring more violence between Hamas and Israel if the thinking within the Israeli government is that they should go tougher on Hamas. People in Gaza are worried this may mean more military action.
So what about Hamas? Hamas has gained some popularity uh, with the public in Gaza. How might that have an impact on the ceasefire and the talks? Well, Emery, you know, the way this always works in these conflicts is whenever Hamas, in, in their words, stands up to Israel, it's seen as something of a victory. And the number of rockets, 460 over the course of 24 hours, that really is unprecedented. And a lot of these rockets got through. The famed Iron Dome defense system, we saw it in action, was able to take out one in four. And the Israeli defense forces told me these were the one in four important ones. They couldn't hit them all. So Hamas sees this is something of a military victory. There are six people killed in Gaza. There is one person killed on the Israeli side. But whenever there is conflict between the two, there is more support for Hamas. All right, Charlie Daggett reporting for us in London. Charlie, thank you very much. Thank you.